Good day. Welcome back. It's October 14th. Thanks for your response to the, the vid I just put out yesterday. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I've got a little bit of time to be doing some wraps videos. I kind of created it with my regular job here before we get into the full season. So thanks for your responses to the episode 16 yesterday. We're going to talk more about these E10 contracts. Uh, for those of you that are still kind of up in the air of do we keep Wainwright, Bonga, or Sam Decker, or is this new move to retain this youngster from OKC that we just signed on an E10 contract going to be our 15th player. The answer there is that my video from yesterday, episode 16, my prediction's correct. That new player, Hall, is proof that we are trying to emulate our NBA roster at the 905 G League. So we are trying to do precisely what I said in episode 16. If you're not clear on what that is, please go check it out. Where I do need your help on the episode 16 stuff is understanding how the G League contracts with the E10s interplays with these 10-day contracts at the NBA level. Because here's the conundrum. Freddie Gillespie, for instance, I'm being told, is still retained at the G League level by the Memphis Hustle, but we were able to sign him to a completely different franchise at the NBA level. So there's an interplay between the G League and the NBA that I need a better understanding of, and I'd like your guys' help. So what I can't find is a current version of what the contra the G League contracts are for G League players. So if you go back to episode 16, there's a link in the in the comments that has last year's G League contracted players, but it's not up to date. If someone has an up to date version of those contracts, all of us watching these videos would love to see it. Because we want to know, is Bonga still retained by the G League Lakers? How do these things interplay? Because this is the future of the NBA, is stacking your G League team to be able to groom players, yes, but also emulate the NBA team to run not just players, but develop plays. So we're looking to develop plays, not just players anymore. And to do that, we're going to be spending money on these E10 G League contracts in the 905. Really, really cool stuff. Episode 14, guys were deciding between Bonga, Wainwright, and Decker. I just wanted to point out, because a lot of you have said, thanks so much for the Decker video. The Decker video shows that this is not a one-dimensional shooter. I know in the last game against the Wizards of the preseason, he looks like a pure shooter. He's not just a shooter. He can do a lot of different things, including stumble and hit the ball off his face. So check out that video. It also shows why he most likely left and went to Germany. He's just freaking too many trades and too little time. And he was traded not because he was shit, but because he was good. He was like a good piece for all the teams he played for. And finally, after Cleveland, J.R. Smith, he got frustrated and left. So now he's back. He's a total steal. And he was the first thing the Raptors did in the, in the free agency. I don't think he's going anywhere. I, I've been wrong before. Okay. Kalo's playing in Miami. So now let's get to the Kalo return. Did we get a good return for Kalo? So let's get right into it. Let's take a look at what we got for Dr. Kyle. All right. Is it worth it? So first and foremost, we got for the best Raptor ever. We got Precious Achua as a second year center coming to the league, modern center. And we got veteran guard Goran Dragic at 19.4 mil a season and an expiring contract. That's a fairly favorable return already for a number of reasons. So the first reason is right away, I think we'll all agree that the number one reason is we got our young center for the future. A lot of the videos that were dedicated to the Raptors prior to free agency in the draft this year were centered on the Raptors getting a center. So there were so many people that were like, should we take Evan Mobley in the draft if he falls to us? That kind of thing. And it, it was appealing if we we're in a rebuild, right? So the question at that time was, are we rebuilding or are we going to keep Kalo, draft at four, maybe trade the pick away? There was a whole bunch of scenarios potentially. So anyway, we kept Precious and it's a good thing we did. Let's take a look at Precious is real here. He's got a favorable contract and he's a modern center. Like, let's take a look at what he actually brings to the table here. Like, he's able to go left, he's able to go right. They can play him as the trailer. Here he is, coming in last, right? They clear out underneath. No foul there, but there it is on Shangun, who was like 
one of the top centers after Mobley in the draft this year. And he's playing against Shangun and Tice in this the, this game. I just did the, the Houston game for the most part. But he's obviously able to run the floor. He's a long arm monster like we were looking for. And then take a look at this, this play. How many centers can do this? Like, show me D D Andre Drummond doing that. All right, so there's, there's what he can bring to the table. So there's the number one thing. The bottom line is most of us now having seen Precious and now having known where Bobby and Masai's plan is in terms of the long arm monster lineup that we want to run. Now that we know that, most of us would go back and say, you know what, we got more for Kalo just with Precious Achua than we got for Bosch and Vince. So great, good job, right? But what else do we get? Well, we also got a maxed dollar value for the return for Kalo. So we had roughly, you know, 20 some odd million going out the door. So we wanted to balance that. So we brought in two point something from Precious and 19.4 for Dragic. So Precious was 2.7. So we're like 24 mil between all of them, right? So we got 24 mil. As it sits right now, we're above the luxury tax threshold. So probably we want to move a contract before the end of the year. Hence the rumors that Dragic would get moved before the end of the season. Most people are speculating he'd get moved right away or before the beginning of this, this year. There's a good reason why he hasn't been moved. And we should already know the answer because we just went through it. Anyway, let's take a look at number three. So already we've got a young center for the future, which we needed. And we've got maxed our dollar value out for Kalo in terms of the return. Number three, we got a mentorship for our young guards that offers size. And this is a big deal. Listen to Goran Dragic himself when asked about what his role in the team would be. It's a young group of guys. So um, the main thing that what I can bring, uh, you know, I'm a vet. It's my 14 years in the league. So experience and try to teach those young kids, um, give them some support. And basically same thing that uh, Steve Nash did for me when I was in Phoenix. So, um, you know, I love playing basketball. I'm here for those guys. And, um, you know, if they're going to need me, um, give them some you know, experience what to do before the game, after the game, during the game, and um, just to be available for them. So that's what Goran Dragic himself says is one of the perks to bringing him in. And this is, we'll get to, uh, it's about 420's comment soon, but this is the point, is that we're moving in the direction of bringing in mentors. And one of the knocks that I had about moving Kalo last year was that why not keep him as a mentor for guys like Scotty Barnes? You'll remember, I was all about, no Suggs, Scotty Barnes the whole time. And I was saying, Scotty Barnes is a true leader. Let's groom him under Kyle. So I didn't see the return for Kyle being amazing. I stand corrected. Precious Chua and Dragic for Kyle is great. So here we go. Let's take a look at what else we got. In, in addition to the mentor for our uh, young guards and all of these players like Gary Trent Jr. and Malachi and Scotty himself. We also got a fighting chance this season. So all of this brings us to our number four reason after mentorship. And that's a fighting chance this season. So what do I mean by that? Like, how is it possible that we have a fighting chance this season when everyone thought we were going to take the fourth overall pick tank and get rid of Kalo, right? How is that possible? Well, here's why. Look at our lineup. So we're going to have some combination of Decker, Wainwright, and Utah, probably the three, or Bonga, who I've left off because that, this is my assumption. We got our two-way contracts and then we got our guaranteed. This is a great lineup. So the question becomes, who are we competing against? And the answer there is these guys. So the Eastern Conference is strong. It's not like the West is the only place to be these days. But all of these teams, barring Cleveland, Orlando, and Detroit, have vastly improved. The Bulls are super improved. People think the Wizards are not. I think if they get defense going there, they're going to be formidable. I think if you see something from... like the, I think the Bucks are going to finish in the top... I don't think the Nets are going to be as strong as people say, even though the team is crazy. I think the Knicks are improved with Kemba 
and the young guys they got. Hawks are a great team. I think the Celtics will actually fall potentially. I don't think, like, I mean, Charlotte's getting better. The Pacers, people are writing off the Pacers. The Pacers with Carlisle coming in are super good, in my opinion. There's no reason to think that Pacers brought Carlisle in to not compete. So, but the bottom line is, as I said, our roster is such that we're an improved team, not a lesser team. Like everyone thought we were drafting Suggs and we're going to be rebuilding. But the truth of the matter is that Scotty Barnes is what I said he was from before the draft. And that's a player coming in as Draymond Green already or Ben Simmons already and already getting better at his shooting. And this is why the return for Kyle Lowry is massive. Let's take a look at number five. Bird rights, baby. Bird rights are maybe one of the biggest things that we get here. And the reason they're maybe the biggest thing we get here, it has to do with last season. Didn't we learn last year what bird rights can do when we saw Kyle go out and we saw what we get for him? The reason we got the return we did for Kyle Lowry is because we had his bird rights. And we just got the bird rights for Goran Dragic, an expiring contract. So again, this isn't just bird rights. This is an expiring contract on a veteran contract. Veterans are needed by other teams, especially at the trade deadline. We've already seen how, uh, the fit potentially in Dallas. And the idea that maybe Moses Brown would come over to us. So this is, this is a return that we might see at the trade deadline. Or maybe in again, a sign and trade when free agency starts next year. So we might be moving Goran Dragic in a very similar way to how we move Kyle Lowry. And we might be keeping him for a full season to give us all of these things. Mentorship, a fighting chance this season, bird rights, an expiring contract at the end of next year. Expiring contracts in the NBA are worth their weight in gold at the trade deadline and also in the offseason. So don't, don't assume that Dragic is going to be leaving even at the trade deadline. We could do the same thing we did with Kyle Lowry with him next year. I mean, it's, it's not to say that you won't move because we probably don't want to pay the luxury tax. And right now we're above the threshold. But that brings us to number six that we got in this trade. And that's options. What do I mean by that? Well, what I mean by that is Goran Dragic is 19 mil. But let's say we want to hang on to him for the year. And at the trade deadline, we decide Gary Trent Jr. and his $16 million won't play defense. He's not the chaser. He's not playing as the chaser in the box in one. He's not able to keep up in the triangle in two. He's just not playing defense. What if we want to move him? He's a very highly valued player. And we have on him the same thing we have on Dragic and Precious. Bird rights, baby. We've got his bird rights. So Lowry trade is valuable in the sense that it gives us number six, options okay so did we get a good return for kyle lowry hell yeah we did so i guess the last thing to ask is does he want to be here because his off-season comments uh at home suggested that he didn't and that was the whole point to it's about 420's comment uh that he left in the summer and he basically said first of all it's about 420 is the second best time of the day 420 being the best time but secondly, he says, I don't know about you, but I feel like everyone is talking about this whole Dragic thing, taking it way too far. I'm expecting a lot of backlash from fans for defending Dragic, but his original comment about having higher ambitions could have been misconstrued or lost in translation. I completely, completely agree with this statement. And I think it's absolutely the case that Dragic was taken out of context. Then he goes on to say, it's not like he came out and claimed to hate the city and call the Raptors a shit team. Yet people are acting as though he did. The man is allowed to have preferences, just like anyone else, being traded that doesn't have the capital to choose their destination. Bang on. Bang on, 420. He's not James Harden. He's not Ben Simmons this year, okay? He's not Kyrie a few years ago with Cleveland. This is a guy that doesn't have the capital, well put, 420, to, to choose his destination. And are we really going to fault a guy who almost won a championship with the Heat a couple years ago, lost to the Lakers, but he actually was 
bonded with that team. That's like being mad at DeMar DeRozan when he got moved. You want guys with spirit and fire and loyalty to the city. That's what it really comes down to. Because as I already showed you, the return on him is rinse and repeat. We can have a good season this year where the worst case scenario is we miss the playoffs and we've got Drogic mentoring our kids, provided he's in the attitude to do so. So is he going to be? And I'm with 420. I think that all that matters is that he's professional on the court when the first jump ball is thrown. So is Drogic in the mood to help the franchise or not? Let's take a look. I mean, yeah, everything what happened in the past, uh, you know, it, it came out wrong. Um, I did apologize, and I want to apologize right now, too. Um, it, it was not my attention, but, uh, you know, organization and the players, they were me welcome. It was really nice. All the guys are nice. Of course, we need to work on on small details as a chemistry and everything, but that's going to come. That's why it's training camp and preseason games. Uh, you know, those are all guys who won a championship ring, so... They already know what it, what it takes to you know to be a championship, what it takes to to get to the finals and to 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 win the finals. So just you know try to be here for them and play hard. I think so. That's the most important thing to to give everything what I got. Yeah, it's a young team, but I think so. It's a good mix of experienced players and a young team who are gonna play hard every night, every possession, and um, you know win some games. Toronto has a great, uh, great fans. They tough fans. Always a good team. It's always tough to play here. You know they always play tough. The fans are awesome, and uh, it's it's it's. I always have uh, that memory that every time when you play Toronto, it's going to be a long, long night. So. So I'd say the guy's ready to play, and he knows exactly what his role is. So again, guys, bird rights for the win. We used him with Kyle Lowry. We got Precious Achua out of it for the long term. We got Drogic so that we can do all of these things. So was the return for Dr. Kyle a good one? Yes. We're not even out of contention this year, although we've got a hard Eastern Conference to deal with. It's no joke. Don't forget, guys. Like, subscribe, do all those things. We'll see you in the next one. And don't forget, it's all about the Larry. Dude, Kawhi, can I play 2K with you? I don't even know where you're sitting at. Like. <laughs> That's bullshit, Kawhi. <laughs> Your laugh is this stupid. This is chef's kiss approved. Mwah!